people that find gratification in inappropriate behavior with kids are trying to justify their desire to assault children as an equivalent of the LGBTQ community. Hey, and welcome to another episode of The Hit Zero Show. I'm Dr. Travis Owens, and I want to thank you so much for joining me for this episode. Now, in our previous episode, we covered a touchy subject in our sport that is gaining a lot of traction. If you haven't listened to that episode, go back, listen to that episode. It'll help you to understand a lot of the things that we talk about today and kind of the viewpoints that we have on this topic. There was a documentary that came out called Athlete A that covers the story of the scandal of USA Gymnastics. Now, because of that documentary, a lot of athletes in cheerleading are starting to come forward about uh, times that they have been a victim of sexual assault. Even in the last like week or so, a lot has been coming out on social media. We started to see touches of it, uh, you know, immediately following that documentary, but it's gaining traction. I'm happy to report to you guys that there actually is some big things uh, in the works to help bring light to the problem in our sport. The, the things that our kids are, are saying and the, you know, the, the courage that they're having of coming forward is making traction. You know, I, I had uh, quite a few people reach out after that last episode uh, to express their frustrations with you know, the lack of transparency in the sport of these these actions that are happening uh, a lot of anger um, and actually had some some amazing people that reached out and uh, started a dialogue of how to try to make a bigger impact and actually get justice for these victims um, so that they can do the sport they love without fear of being assaulted and so I'm, I'm happy to say that there actually is some work going on uh, in the background again it's I want to tell you guys everything that I can, but I also don't want to risk affecting in a negative way the positive things that are happening to shed light on uh, this problem in our sport. And the only thing I can say now is as these things evolve, I promise I will share more specific information with you. Um, you know, Number one is I want to protect the victims um, and let them tell their story, but I also don't want to interrupt with the legal system that is potentially coming into play. If, if you're listening and you have been a victim of sexual assault in our sport, either by a coach, you know, by a parent, whatever the case may be, I, I just I beg you to uh, to not give up, to work on building that strength of feeling like you can confide in someone. Because the more people that speak up, the better we're going to be. The faster this problem is going to get solved. As soon as details are uh, safely shareable with you guys, I promise uh, I will definitely do so. One thing that's come up recently that really just, I was just at a loss for words. And the timing of this couldn't be more perfect with what's going on um, with the Athlete A story and also with some of the scandals and cheerleading. And that is the LGBTQP. If you're not familiar with this, basically the simplest description or the simplest definition of this are people that are pedophiles, people that find gratification in inappropriate behavior with kids are trying to justify their desire to assault children as an equivalent of the LGBTQ community. Basically saying that it's something that is normal and that they can't help it, so to say, and that it's just as normal as a sexual attraction to someone of the same sex. We know that our sport has been a safe space for the LGBTQ community for years. I, I don't think that there's any debate that we as a sport have been much more progressive in not creating an environment where members of the LGBTQ community um, feel unsafe or unwelcome. I mean, there are many uh, 
uh, many athletes and coaches historically and present in our sport that have been comfortable being themselves, being openly gay, um, openly lesbian, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The LGBTQ community, you know, the fight that they've put up against people judging them, against inequality, this has been going on forever. It's been going on since as early as the late 1800s. There's been touches of this fight for equality uh, in this arena for a long time. And the term LGBTQ, that actual term actually sprung up in the 80s, but before that you had, um, in the 1970s, 1973, homosexuality was removed from the DSM, which is the catalog that, uh, uh, that is used to label psychological or mental disorders. Homosexuality was removed from that manual or from that diagnostic criteria. And then in the 80s, we had the actual LGBTQ acronym that started to be used. And so now you've got a group of people who are criminals, who are sexually assaulting children and creating victims are trying to justify their actions as the equivalent of the LGBTQ uh, community's description that their attraction to uh, members of the same sex, et cetera, et cetera, is innately born within them and that they can't help it and that they, they do not choose that, that they, uh, it's, it's, it's just who they are. And that is frustrating and, and so disrespectful to the LGBTQ community. If you look up the definition of pedophilia, or if you break that word down, pedo and philia, Philia is a Greek term that is defined in the dictionary as an abnormal love for a specific thing. An abnormal love. Even by definition alone, the philia is defined as abnormal. Pedo is for child. So by definition alone, pedophilia is an abnormal love for a child. That should say enough there. It's... It's, an, it's not right. Not right morally, ethically, and most importantly, it's not right legally. And it's the difference here, which is obvious, but the diff biggest difference is pedophilia is a crime. Above all, a moral crime, an ethical crime, and a legal crime. It's not victimless. It leaves the victims scarred, and many of them for life. There's plenty of evidence and research in that field or in, the, in the, 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 psych, the psychological field of the detriment of sexual assault, not only as a kid, but even as an adult, just in general. Sexual assault is, is, not, is, is a victim-causing crime. Being attracted to someone of the same gender, of the same sex, these things are not crimes, you know? And not to get into a debate on, you know, whether you believe that LGBTQ or homosexuality, et cetera, is, you know, whether you're born with it or you're, you know, you choose, that's not what this is a, de a debate about. We're not talking about creating a victim by loving who you love in that community. What we're talking about is people who prey on children are trying to justify what they do by saying that it's an innate thing that's born within them and they can't help it. And then to lump themselves into, or an attempt to lump themselves into the LGBTQ community and say, oh no, it's just like this, is disgraceful. For all of the, the work and the effort that this community has put in to fighting for their equality, to now have a group that is victimizing children try to jump on the bandwagon and say, hey, we fall in this too, is ridiculous. What's hard for us in this community, in the cheer community, is we have, again, this safe haven that has been, you know, that is widely accepting of, of people of all orientation. But then we've also got all these stories coming out about sexual assault and, and predators. 
And so it's most important now, more than ever, that we, we take a stand against sexual assault against children. And the reason for that is protecting the children first and foremost. We've got to protect these kids. We've got to let them know that this is a safe place for them and that when things happen to them, we're going to stand up to protect them. And then we're going to go above and beyond that by taking steps to make sure we're doing everything in our power to prevent it from happening again. But also, now we've got this group of, of people in the LGBTQ community who have historically been welcomed and respected and appreciated and shown that we, we are welcoming of their diversity and we accept them. And we've got to protect their identity too. Because if this gets lumped in with this group of people unfairly and unjustly, or even if it's, you know, even to some small extent, if there's, you know, anyone in the public that starts to associate this with that, now we're really in trouble. We've got a lot of negative PR that is coming our way. We cannot allow this LGBTQP to take to happen because not only are we justifying you know, or allowing a group to try to justify the crimes that they commit against children, but then we're also now putting at risk a community that has historically been protected and, and respected in our sport and, 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 and loved and appreciated, and now their fight is basically being potentially demeaned. So this whole idea of the pedophilia being something that can be justified simply is ridiculous. We have to take a stand against that and say that we not only are going to fight for our kids to protect them, but we're also going to fight for those in our community that have been fighting already for so long to protect them. And so as this continues to evolve, keep your eyes open as to these things that are happening. And again, I urge you to talk to your athletes. If you're a parent, talk to your kids, help them to create an environment where they feel safe talking to you about if they've been assaulted or if there's been a situation where, you know, something didn't quite feel right and keep talking guys, keep the conversation going. Because as I mentioned, there are big things that are happening behind the scenes that are going to expose the predators in our sport. Do not be scared to speak up. If you need help or you need resources, talk to your coaches, talk to your parents, reach out to me. I will get you connected with people to help make sure that, that justice is served. Again, I know that this is not a, an easy topic to talk about. Um, if you have followed any of my stuff over the last few years, I can talk up a storm about really anything. And this topic is one that is just very hard to put into words the feelings that, that come up because there are so many. Um, a lot of them anger, frustration, um, and, and being, you know, trying to stay level headed and, and come up with real positive action steps to see change. Um, is challenging and also just talking about it is challenging. You know, it's, it's hard to come up with the right words at times to express these feelings without, um, you know, with, with a clear, concise message. So, um, I appreciate those that have reached out to me based on our last episode. Uh, we got to keep the conversation going because as things are being talked about more actions are being made and it's, it's, it's moving us forward. As always, this is about keeping our athletes healthy and safe and providing an environment for them to be able to express their athletic ability and their personality and, and to grow them into uh, not only better athletes, but better human beings. And in order, in order to do that, we have to create an environment for, uh, for them to be able to do that safely. So I appreciate you joining me for this episode and I look forward to your feedback. Please continue to reach out, continue to send private messages if that's how you feel most comfortable so we can keep this dialogue going. Um, and uh, I look forward to uh, catching you guys on the next episode.